there was the candles and the serviettes and everything was laid out. Immaculate it was. Yeah, we tried to copy it at home. <laughs> we never managed it. Yeah. We were very, very fond of them. Our neighbours, Edna and George. They had a big family, there were seven of them. And they used to invite me and my late brother over every Christmas. It was chaotic, it was. But it was good. Of course, I remember Christmases during the war. We had nothing. Well, nobody had anything then. And that was, that was the times. We just lived through them. Second Royal Tank Regiment I was. They called me into the office, or marched me in one day, and they said, we've got a problem. I thought, oh, crikey. Britain's fighting forces are under strength. <laughs> Truthfully, look at me, five foot six. I thought, they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. So he said, we're transferring you to another unit. I had to go with all my gear from Tidworth to Oxford by train. Horrible journey. And I was only there two days. They called me into the office and said, you're being transferred to the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment. I said, well, where, where are the stations, sir? Tidworth, he said. Oh, my life! Tidworth! So I went back to Tidworth. And then, of course, I met my wife, got married in 1960, and spent our Christmases here. I used to say to her, you're the kind of girl would ride shotgun on a stagecoach. She could do anything. She was my right-hand man. And then you retire. Your loved one dies. And suddenly you think to yourself, Co, where is she? I've got no one to talk to. And so you start talking to yourself. I talk to myself like the clappers. And the good thing with me, of course, is I get on well with myself. Some people don't, you know. They're always arguing with themselves. Or I don't. I say, now, come on. We don't argue. Come on, kid. We can do this. So that's how I do. But it's not easy. Loneliness isn't easy at all. 